this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, the United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, whatever you want to call it, has a new king. And that is King Charles III. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, in this magnificent getup. The new king is wearing the robe of state. It is made from crimson velvet, gold lace, and trimmed with ermine fur. Underneath, he's wearing a purple satin tunic trimmed with gold artillery lace. Purple and gold being the colors of royalty. The medallion around his neck must be worth millions. And what about that crown? That crown says it all. It's called the Imperial State Crown. It's made of gold and set with 2,868 diamonds, 17 sapphires, 11 emeralds, 269 pearls, and 4 rubies. The crown contains some of the most famous jewels in the royal collection. Yes, it does, including the Cullinan II, the second star of Africa, which they stole from South Africa and won't give back. But the new king had his day in all speculation about him stepping down and letting William take over the new kingship is resolved. He is the new king and Prince William is now the crown prince, which means he's next in line for all of this fabulosity. And he had a fabulous coronation on Saturday. And now he is enthroned as the new king of England the United Kingdom, Great Britain, the Commonwealth, whatever you want to call it, they've got a new king. And everybody showed up but Meghan Markle and her children, including a bunch of Africans. Africans were on display at the coronation. So that was their way of telling the world, real not racist, look at all of these Negroes here, singing and buck dancing and look at these heads of states all dressed up in their custom-made suits and looking important. And look at these characters in their national garb trying to make a statement. They're here, you see? We're very accepting. We're treating them like regular people. They're our friends. We just don't want them in our family. This is a South African opera singer named Pretty Yande. She sang at the coronation and she did really well. I listened to it on YouTube. She is quite beautiful, and she sang lovely. She looks like an African-American opera singer. Sorry, but she did a very good job, and the South Africans were very proud of her. So see how inclusive the British royal family is? And this next group, I'm not sure what they sang, but they sounded pretty good, and they also looked like an African-American singing group. So I'm still looking for all of this great culture that these Africans claim they're so proud of, because they come across looking like black Americans to me. So the Africans showed up for the coronation and they showed out. And I keep seeing black Americans on Twitter saying, well, what are you doing there? Why are you there? They don't even like black people. Well, uh, to me, black Americans really should sit this one out because whenever there's a presidential inauguration or anything going on in America, big deal thing going on in America, white Americans will drag up some black people to participate and they'll just get right on stage, just like these Africans, skinning and grinning and glad to be there. So I don't even understand why black Americans are trying to question these Africans because Africans actually do have some kind of a relationship with the British royal family and the United Kingdom because they're in the Commonwealth, which, which you know, almost certainly shows that they're going to get robbed to death. And I mean the Africans with those colonizers, but they seem to be fine with it. So they trust being in an association with their former colonizers, probably still colonizers, because they still can't get that diamond back 
the South Africans, I mean, that they call the Star of Africa, that big diamond that the British got a hold to and won't let them have. But in a way, I think the Africans enjoyed that kind of relationship with those Europeans. Otherwise, they would cut ties with them and they won't. So I just say leave them alone. My critique is not about the Africans. I'm still asking, where's Megan? Where is Megan? Now, the wild card at the coronation was Prince Harry. He showed up alone. And newscasters and these news people were trying to say, oh, he looks so pitiful. He looks so sad. No, he didn't. He came because he did that out of respect for his father and his brother, who is now the crown prince of the United Kingdom or whatever they call that country. And so he came out of respect. Megan didn't come because Megan gets treated like a dog when she goes there by those people, by the British public and probably members of the royal family. So she doesn't go and I don't blame her. But Prince Harry went, he played the game, he laughed and he smiled and then he'll probably go back and write a book about it and sell, and sell millions of copies of books and make gobs of money, which is why they say they left the royal family in the first place because they want to become independently wealthy. They don't want to depend on the British taxpayers for bread and butter and cornflakes and milk. So they decided they're going to get out and make their own money. And instead of giving him respect and respecting him for not wanting to be a part of that and giving it up, really, they're still trying to drag him back in and try to make him feel guilty. And they're doing everything they can to demean and degrade Meghan Markle. And so for that, I ask, was it even worth it? Meghan Markle is getting it from every angle. There's the British royal family that really doesn't seem to accept her. There's the British press that seems to be determined to character assassinate her every day of the year, 24-7, 365 days out of a year. They are doing a hit job on Meghan Markle. It's just outrageous how they treat her. And that British press never gives up the resilience that they have in trying to drag this woman down all because that man wanted her and showed the world that this was the woman that he wanted and he was willing to give it up for her. However, I believe that Harry wanted out of that royal family anyway. And I think that Meghan came along and that was his off ramp and he took it. I don't believe that Prince Harry was happy since his mother passed until he met Meghan Markle. Because when you see pictures of them, when you see videotapes of them together, him with his mom and his brother, they just seem so happy and so carefree. They just seem so very happy. But then later on, you saw him looking sad, getting into trouble, and he admitted that he had a very hard time coping with what happened to his mother because many people believe that what happened to her was not an accident, that she was murdered. And he knows more about that than anybody. So I believe that he has had hard feelings about people, not only the British press, but probably some of those people at Buckingham Palace that was giving his mother such a hard time. So I believe he wanted out. Also, they were working royals before they left the British royal family. And the working royals are paid for by the British taxpayers. And they nitpick and complain about everything the royals do. And then if they say anything, if they raise a question about the press, then they start talking about how much they're paying them and they, how much they pay them. And so Prince Harry, like any real man, I think decided, I don't need your money. I can get out and make my own money. And he has made more money since he has been with Megan in California than he would ever have gotten fooling around with those British taxpayers who are whining about their own bills and living expenses. So he wanted out. And you would think that since they complain so much about what the royals spend, they would have been glad to get rid of one of them. But it turns out they weren't. But it just seems like Prince Harry wanted out. He wanted out of the royal family and all of that royal protocol. Because if he hadn't wanted out, he wouldn't have left. And also, Prince Harry was not a fool. He knew that Meghan was not going to be accepted by those people. Meghan 
is the one I think that ends up with egg on her face all the time. And again, I'm questioning, was it even worth it? Was it worth it to have your name dragged through the mud day in and day out? Not only by those people over there in England, but by her family, her daddy's children here in the United States. They are suing her. How can you sue somebody? Because she said she felt like an only child growing up and they took her to court for that. Now, we... <laughs> It's just like Megan had a charmed life right up until the time she married Prince Harry. And I think by her own admission, she was a white passing biracial or she thought she was passing. See, the people here in the United States, white people in the United States play a different game with, with biracials than they do in the UK. In the United States, you can get away with that biracial stuff. But we see now that you cannot get away with it in the UK. I wonder about Megan every time I see one of those hit pieces in a tabloid. I wonder if she had it to do over again, if she'd do it again. Because I just cannot imagine that anybody could put up with that kind of pressure. That you've got somebody with a knife in your back every day of your life. And her mother said that she wishes that she had done a better job of explaining racism and how you know, society, how racist this society, this Western civilization can be. But I think to me, Megan and her mother both kind of clueless because everybody in the United States of America knew about racism except Megan Markle, I guess. But she's getting a good dose of it now. She's getting a good dose of it now. So they had the coronation and there's a new king and queen in town. They don't look good for their age as far as I'm concerned. They look every bit of however old they are. So they are now the new king and queen of England. So anyway, I watched part of the coronation. There's no way I was going to sit there and watch three or four hours of that nonsense. But I did watch part of it. And the part of it that I saw, I thought was this is a very ancient, antiquated, outdated way of governing. For me, they do have a prime minister and a parliament. And hopefully they will keep them in the 21st century and not be tempted to take the nation and the commonwealth back to the 15th, 16th, 17th, or 18th century or whenever it was that they gained so much power. So where was Megan? The tabloids report that she was at home planning her son Archie's fourth birthday party. And that Harry was going to jet into London, attend the coronation, and get on a plane and jet back to California. And it appears that is what he did. Now, other reports say that Megan didn't go to the coronation because her children weren't invited. Now, their grandfather was being crowned king of England and every other place that he's king of. And they weren't invited. That doesn't sound quite right, but given who it is, it just might be because the former Atlanta mayor, Andy Young, said racism began with the British. Well, anyway, I wish them the best. I um, Now the coronation is over and let's see what the new King Charles III is going to do to help the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth including Wales and Scotland and Ireland. Let's see what he's going to do to improve the lives of those people. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.